given to me. The word of God has given us. God, we are so happy for the word of God. How are you happy for the word of God? Amen. God, may your people continue to read it and read it and read it and read it and apply it and apply it and apply it. Father God, give them ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. God, to bind every distraction, every rascal of the enemy of mind. God, kill those chicken pains in their stomachs. That food, and that man, God, get it out of them. Don't let them get hungry until we're done. Amen. All right, Matthew chapter 12. And I'm going to be talking about, in a minute, I'm going to get to the verse that I want to go. I want you to just keep your Bibles open to Matthew 12. And the Lord was dealing with me this morning, man. You could tell Pastor Shirley I was waking up super early, man. I mean super early. Like 3.30, 4 o'clock, man. Just early, man, talking to God. And you know, if you're, if you're quiet enough, he'll talk back to you. I'm going to read uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. Just, leave your, just stay there in Matthew. And I'm going to read verse 17. And the Bible says this, For the time has come where judgment to begin at the Amen. house of God. Amen. You hear yeah. what I read? Yeah. For the yeah. time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. Yeah. And if it begins with us, what will it be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? That's right. So what I'm hearing here, God is saying that you all should be obeying the gospel. Amen. Amen. But not all you do. And judgment is coming. I believe you're going to see believers drop dead in church, man. Because they're not serving God 100%. I believe it. Because how you know, God says, I'm a holy God. Right? He loves you. And he says uh, in, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15, but as he who called you is holy, everybody say holy. holy. You also be holy, holy in your conduct. In your conduct. And there are powers of darkness that are disrupting you people's conduct. And you need to get delivered of that, man. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Because it is written, be holy. Now watch. God says, be holy, for I am holy. Look at somebody say, be holy. Be holy. Be holy, man. Be holy. If, you, if you haven't been walking in holiness, you're, you need to repent. You need to repent. Holiness with, listen, just listen to what I'm going to say. Without holiness, you're not going to see God. Amen. You're not going to see him. No matter how nice you are, how much money you've given to the church, how much you've done in ministry, that don't mean nothing. Without holiness, you will not see God. Amen. And the church said? Amen. 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 You're not going to see God, man. So we got so many attachments of the world that, that have been attached to some of you that you need to be cut off once and for all. Amen. See, you know, I was going back. We've been having deliverance conferences for almost over 12 years, every October. And I'm watching the people. And I'm going to read something here that is going to wake you up. Because the only one that can hinder you from moving forward is yourself. But you open the door to the evil one. Right. The evil one is not dead. He's quite alive. Like, you, like I said earlier, if he could, he's got so much evil stored up, he would begin the tribulation right now. Do you understand? Some of you have been coming to church with that entity working in you, and don't think nobody's seen it. You've got people that are very discerning, very sharp, that are filled with the Holy Ghost, and the only reason they haven't approached you is because of the love of Jesus, and they want to wait on God's timing. You understand? Now, listen, your bodies, say my body, my body. is the temple. Temple. Of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Say it again. My body, my body is the temple, is the temple. of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Say amen. amen. That's it. Your temple is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And you need to pray this prayer. No entity. I will share this temple with no entity at all. You understand? No entity. Can you say amen? amen. You know what? I used to use this in my deliverance class. You know, it was like how the devil get in, gets into people. I should tell them, hey, remember that movie Alien? How that alien got in through your mouth and then pfft, just like that. Some of you are still struggling with evil spirits, but you either don't want it, you don't care, or you don't, you just just go, don't care. You don't want to, you don't want to keep moving. I have an uh, that's one of our spiritual daughters back there. Look at that. 
And she's so little. Now look, she got all the kids. Wow. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, so you, you need to look at I love what Jesus said. It's so wonderful. Jesus said, he says, the thief comes. Oh, listen, listen. He comes. He comes. So he's yeah. going to come to you. You understand? Right. He's going to come. But you need to recognize him. And that's the problem with many of you. You don't recognize him. Or else you act dumb. <laughs> Got a lot of dum-dums in the kingdom. <laughs> because you let that enemy, you let him, you let him do this. Tim, you know you don't need to go to church. Go buy a pound of dope and get high. Don't tell me he don't speak to you. I mean, hey, I mean, and, and look, if the devil spoke to Jesus, who are you? Yeah. Who are you? The devil is going to speak to you. And let me, and you, I want to encourage those that are living righteous. I mean, you're living, I mean, squeaky clean by the, by the grace of God because you pray and you fast and you're trying to do your best. You're the target for the enemy. Just when you get to heaven, ask Job. <laughs> ask Job. Yeah. He was a man that loved God. He has shoot evil. Yeah. He was a righteous man of his day. Yeah. So if you're living <laughs> righteous to the best you can, you're on the firing line. So you better get used to it. I say get used to it. Uh, and you know what? Some of you think the devil just tempted Jesus in Matthew 4 and it was over. No. All his life, 33 years, I mean, the thir 30 years when, when he started 30, the three years he was being coming against by everybody. You understand? And he's going to come against you. You know, I, I told, I was telling some people, I wanted to get out of the deliverance ministry a long time ago because it's nasty, it's challenging, it's ugly, but the Lord would not let me. He just, he kind of fortified me. Amen. And I began to do the deliverance workshop conferences, mm -hmm. and they were powerful, man. Yeah. Very yeah. powerful. Some of you weren't even here. <laughs> but we're going to do, uh, Lord willing, Lord willing, I'm going to do another one this year. Not going to tell you who I'm bringing in. So you all better be ready. Yeah. If you need, I hope you don't, I hope, listen, deliverance is the grace of God. Yeah. You understand? Let's get, let's, let me get to the scriptures, man, because I got a lot to read. Verse 12, Matthew chapter 12, verse 22, excuse me. Then one was brought to him who was demon-possessed. Everybody say demon-possessed. Demon -possessed. Who's demon-possessed in here? Raise your hand. No, oh, you ain't going to tell me. How many, how many, how many are you demon-oppressed? There we go, hands going up. God, sir, God bless you. Honest, you know, because you raise your hand, God saw it, He knows your heart, He will set you free from that oppression. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. One more time, how many of you are oppressed by the enemy? Raise your hand. <laughs> Some of you are lying. You don't want to see that, you don't want the church to know you're oppressed. That's pride. That's the nastiest, nastiest demon. Pride. Pride is the nastiest demon. That's the one that kicked the devil out of heaven. Pride was found in him and he was kicked out. You need to get rid of that pride. You need to get right pride. Get rid of the pride of culture. Well, I'm an El Chicano. So what? You need to get rid of the pride of, of your money. I'm loaded. So what? Right. No, no, you need to get rid of pride. Because see, the devil smells what's his. You understand what I'm saying? He smells what is his. And he knows. He knows, man. You know what I'm talking to? The Holy Spirit is bringing to me the sons of Siva. They, they thought they were bad. We're going to have our own ministry of deliverance. We're going we're to do deliverance. We're going to go on TV. We're going to do all this yeah. stuff. Man, the day they faced that demon, that demon started laughing and said, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but who are you? Amen. But I want you to see this. Do you know the devil said, Jesus, I know? But the one I'm more really I want to aim at is Paul. 
He was like you and me. Jesus was in league of his own. Paul was like us. But he sold himself out to God. And believe me, he got so delivered, the devil knew he had him at one time. He was killing Christians. You understand? But he knew. <laughs> that spirit in that man knew that Paul was a holy man. Yeah, yeah. Stay, stay holy, man. Yeah, no, no, because the devil hates holiness. Yeah. You know, you you know what? The devil don't care if you're nice. He's got a lot of nice people too. <laughs> he does. He don't care if you're nice. You should be nice, but he don't care. He's out to destroy you any way possible, with any kind of plan, with any kind of people, with any kind of agenda, he's out to destroy you. Look at somebody who says he's out to destroy you. He's out to destroy you. Just go back to before Christ. He almost destroyed some of us. The first one here. David said, yes, yeah, Steve, yeah, Dad, you, he Almost destroyed me completely. But Jesus came out of the scene. Oh, you all better give God praise. Give God praise. I'm getting excited here. Boy. So, here we go. Verse 12. Then one was brought to him who was demon possessed, blind and mute. And he healed him so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. I'm not going to take a lot of time on the deliverance thing here because. Uh, there are spirits of infirmity that do these things. Blindness, deafness. There are spirits that have to come out. I seen this when I was in India. Man, I tell you, I got, man, I felt, I felt like I was in the New Testament. <laughs> Watching these people get healed of these demonic diseases. Man, I literally saw, and I didn't have to lay hands on them, man. I don't like laying hands on them. When I was preaching the word of God, the word of God will set them free. I was preaching the word of God. Here comes this guy, jumps up, he's got his mat on his back. Hallelujah. Didn't even touch him. But God did. Yeah. I mean, he said God did. God did. Can you say amen? God did. I, I'm telling you, man. You, if you have the word of God in you and you believe the word of God, you don't have to devil, because I know a lot of deliverance ministers that have died because he, the devil got them so tired and burned them out. And they're dead now. And you have to you have to stay in prayer. When you need to back off, you need to back off. Come on, Come on. you're not the only deliverance preacher in the whole yeah. city. Man. Come on, or well, maybe this city. <laughs> but you have to back off a little bit. That's back right. off and take care of yourself. I know. I remember Benny Hinn when he first started. Pastor Benny, man, I'm gonna bring him here one day. I'm gonna call his office, Benny. Come for one hour, then I'll take you back. <laughs> but anyhow. He was praying at the big crusades. You remember the crusades? And uh, I want to thank God for all of you that participated in the crusades, man. That was amazing. But anyhow, after the crusade, he always asked God, God, why do I feel so sick? He said he was feeling sick for a week. He says, listen, I'm your healer also. You have to believe as I heal the people, I will heal you both. Give God praise, somebody. Look at somebody say, Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the healer. I mean, pounding me. But he always does it at the wrong time. He pounds me on a Friday and Saturday. He knows I'm going to preach on Sunday. Give God praise. Amen. And then he says this. Then he says, he was demon possessed. And after Jesus delivered him, he, 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 was, he both spoke. And saw. Amen. Then, and all the multitudes were amazed. They were amazed and said, Could this be the son of David? Now, when the Pharisees heard, heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the Lord of the flies, the ruler of the demons. You know, I, you always wonder, how, how did these guys know he was a ruler of demons? I wonder, I wonder, I kind of wonder, I don't know, I'm just, just give you a thought there. But then verse 25, but Jesus, watch, Jesus knew their thoughts. 
Look at somebody and tell them, Jesus knows every thought you have. Oh, I'm going to have fun with this one, Randy. Jesus has every thought. Look at this, man. When you want to do something evil, he knows. When you look at women that you're not supposed to, he knows. When you're doing something on Facebook you're not supposed to, he knows. Yeah, I went there, didn't I? I use Twitter, too, because I'm on Twitter. And so is Linda. So you, you need to be, you listen. He, he, tell somebody, Jesus knows your thoughts. Preach your brother. Knows your thoughts. Man, you got Christians coming into church like, that like Jesus don't know nothing about it. <laughs> he knows you better than you know yourself. Yeah. You think you know yourself until he reveals something. Whoa. Not me, Lord. Not me. I'm a deacon. <laughs> I'm a I was waiting for him to turn around. See, Dan already smiled and said, Amen. This guy just I don't know where he was. Going. He was hiding back there. So, so look at Jesus knows your thoughts. So when you wake up, you should pray, Lord, make sure my mind is clean. And you know what? You gotta be careful because the devil put thoughts of evil against your brother. You need to be very careful. Be very careful. I mean, that's why do you think you got the help of the salvation to fight those darts, man? Darts, darts. I, I remember I was telling you one Tuesday night when we finished deliverance class, man, I'm telling you, the revelation of the armor of God came out. <coughs> I literally started walking this way, and I could hear the armor clean. Man, man, I could hear it. I said, Jesus, thank you. Everybody say the armor of God. <laughs> you got the armor of God? You better have that armor. You better sleep with it. You, you don't take that thing off. Well, I'm going to soak in a hot tub. I'm just going to take it off. No, you ain't going to soak in a hot tub with that armor. Because as soon as you do that, let's say you guys do that, here it comes walking right by you. And then you start foaming at the mouth. Yeah, Winnie, right, Winnie? That's what they do. Jesus. You know, I was telling somebody, God made beautiful people. He made beautiful people in India, Mexico, Europe, England. Uh, he made beautiful people, but he never made people for you to lust over them. Do you understand? Do you understand that? We have beautiful people in the church. You know, but you're not supposed to be lusting over them. I heard, oh, I want to I I hit home here. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to hit home. Right. I remember we had a little, 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 little issue with some of our sisters that were, they were wearing nice dresses, but they were a little bit, you know, revealing. Thank you, dude. I was going to say something else, but that's okay. Now, that one of the sisters, Comes up to me and says, Pastor Pete, you got to tell those women to start putting some clothes on. You know what I told her? Told her? Sister, you got to tell your husband to quit looking. <laughs> what the heck, man? You know, you're the one that's looking. And all you ladies, you know how to dress proper. All you ladies in this church dress proper. You dress proper. Ain't nothing gonna fall off. Like Charlene's <laughs> like Sister Charlene's blouse, man. Literally, what was it? Her her skirt fell down, her teeth came out, and oh, sister! Oh my god, please tighten up those belts, man. That goes for you men too. You some of you you ain't got the body to wear skinny jeans. Why you wearing it? Why you you know what? I went to Walmart and I saw this guy. I go, Lord, he needs deliverance because those skinny jeans are all ready to pop. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. You know how to dress properly. You know, if you got the goods, you cover them. And if you're married, those only goods belong to your husband. That's it. That's it. They don't belong to all Walmart. You understand it belongs to your husband. So keep covered. Some of you guys that are fit, you know, just stay covered. Stay covered, amen? All right, let's keep going. 
Wow. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, watch what he says. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Now, the word desolation means a state of complete emptiness or destruction, anguish, misery, or loneliness. Anybody ever feel that way? But you as a believer, you shouldn't. You shouldn't feel that way, ever. You shouldn't. Now, what she says is, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. In every city, watch or house divided against itself will not stand. Well, just look at those that are married in the household. Oh, all of a sudden, there was this decibel got quiet. I mean, quiet. When the husband and the wife are not in agreement, you got desolation in that home. And you all better fix it before. I see the devil wants to destroy your family. He hates family. He hates children. He hates. That's why I was so angry when I read about the Democrat stuff. Minnesota governor and the Washington governor passing that law that little children can change their sexes without asking nobody. That is so evil. And then uh, the other day, our vice president, I think it was CBN Live News, she's just bragging with her head, her, her ostrich head going up like this. Don't get in our way. When we want to abort babies and kill them, don't get in our way. You know what? The devil is getting old. You know why? Because God's people are chickens. Amen. You better stand up. Man, I told my granddaughters, let me know when that school is going to bring a drag queen. I'm going to go over there and tell them, I'm going to pull my kids up, or you're going to get that, that witch out of me. Come on, man. You want your kids to be entertained by a drag queen? You know what I did? I know I'm going to get it. I'll probably go to Twitter prison. No, I've been I've been locked up in the Twitter. No. And you know from where? Germany. Germany sent a hate letter because of the things I was posting. And I posted this. For all you drag queens out there, you need to repent before it's too late. Or the devil is going to drag you into hell. And then I finished it. Jesus loves you. Yeah. I didn't get no response, man. No, 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 no. you watch the schools. I, you guys go to high school, right? What are they talking anything about that? No, do you don't know? No. Oh, that's it? You're out of school? Oh, smart mom. Smart mom. Don't let them whatever. Tell your mom. Get you out, put you on live school. <laughs> Bunch of baloney, man. Okay, this, are you waking up? Do you see what they what they're trying to do to our country? Yeah. To our children? Man, I tell you, I, I don't even trust our military. We got drag queen shows in the military. What what is going on, man? David, when you were in the army, it was the army. Right. No, no, it was different. When Harold was in the army, it was the army. And Dan, well, the Navy's been the Navy. Yeah, yeah, they, they started that stuff, man. Wearing those funny pants. Hallelujah! Yeah. You know, let me tell you, even when I was a drug addict kippy, demonstrating the Vietnam War at the University of Michigan, that never crossed my mind. A woman was a woman, and a man was a man. That's right. And the, the man was supposed to be with the woman and the woman with the man. You know, even though you might have thought you could have 20 women, but that wasn't, that was, you know what I mean? No, no, you didn't think that way. But now, I mean, you got Bud Light. You got Maybelline. Ladies, cancel Maybelline. No, who uses Maybelline yet? Ladies, raise your hand. Oh, I ain't raising my hand, that's See, you, no, no, you're innocent. You're innocent. No, don't. Listen, no, no, no. No. Maybelline is with the drags. Yeah. So be careful. Look, 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 look. Don't go out of here. Don't go out of here and say, man, that preacher's telling me to rub off my makeup. No, I'm not. 
Find another bride. Makeup, makeup is not bad. Look it. Use it moderately. You ain't got to look like a clown. Come on, man. When? No way. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on before you start getting melted. Some of you, some of you don't need to go to those things because you, your spirit is not right. You better pray and ask God if you should go. Don't be foolish. I'm going to march in there. I'm going to do an Elijah thing. Elijah, not that they're going to end up throwing you in jail. Don't be acting like that, man. If you feel like the Lord is leading you to go there, do it in way Jesus would. You understand? You see Jesus. You see Jesus act like that? You know who he acted with like that? With the church people. He acted like that with the church people. Oh, I love it when he threw the tables and the money changer. Oh, man! And you know what the Lord has told me? He's about to turn some money tables and tape changers in some people's lives. Oh, give God praise, man. Look at somebody and say, God is for you. God is for you. He's not against you. And you know what? Watch. He's not against us. You make yourself against him. Do you understand that? All right, let's keep going because I got to read, man. He says this. Wow. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Belzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Oh, I love this. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God. Somebody should have said amen. amen. See, only by the true spirit of God can you cast out devils. Man, please, please, please. Don't try to do it with your education, with your teaching. The devil is going to eat you up. Because I want to tell you, see, you need to understand spiritual things, spiritual principalities of ours. These guys have been around a long time, and they've knocked down better men than me. They've knocked down men and women better than me. So you have to be, stay humble. Wait on the wisdom of God. You understand? Because the enemy, he don't play. If you're playing, it's over. Don't be playing. Amen? Man, I'm telling you. you just, if, if you're going to serve God halfway, I suggest stay out of the deliverance ministry until you get right. Because you know what? Jesus wants you right. How do you know that? Jesus wants you right. Remember, remember, he's coming back for a church without wrinkle, spot, or blemish. Who do you think puts those blemishes on you? Who? Satan. He pukes on you. Causes you to puke on yourself. This is the work of the enemy. So let the baby cry. You know why? No, no I'm, I'm more anointed than that. Now let the babies cry. You don't worry about it. Some people say, get that kid out of here. <laughs> Behave yourself. Mothers, just do what you need to do. Can you say amen? amen. If I cast out demons by those of them, by whom your sons cast them out, Jesus asking them. But if I cast out the demons by the Spirit of God, everybody say the Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Okay. I want to know all of you that you know you got the Spirit of God living in you. Let me see the hands. My radar is. I mean, you got the spirit of God in you. Then how come you haven't delivered the whole city of Aiden? I know who you are. God, you, you, need, you, need, you need to start letting God use you if you're called in this ministry. Because there are people, hey, they're out there. Right, that's right. The object, you know what? I think I think this this kind of to me, I think this kind of shakes God a little here. Why am I people continue to getting delivered? They get delivered one Sunday, 
Come back next Sunday, get delivered again. What kind of life is that? You don't see Jesus doing that. I love what he said to the adulterous woman. Go and sin no more. That was it, Gary. Sin no more. Everybody say it. Go and sin no more. What this beautiful sign say? You know, the devil hates this sign. I know he does. I know. What, I'm going to have to turn this way. This is sin over here. All right. What's this sign say? Stop sinning. Stop sinning. That's said the stop sign. All right, keep going. Let's go. I'm almost going to where I need to go. Now I'm going to keep the date. What time is it? Okay, cool. Let me know. Because I didn't bring my watch. I think that was God. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Oh my God, the kingdom of God has come upon you. You know what that is? Kingdom power, kingdom authority, kingdom wisdom, kingdom, 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 kingdom. And I tell you, when you get this understanding, you scare the heck out of the devil. He knows those that have the power and the authority. And you, you no, please don't. Just walk around. Devil, I'm coming. So what? Don't do that. Stay humble before God. That's right, that's right. Stay humble before God. The devil knows when you're coming. He knows. He knows when you, you're ready to battle him and to cast him out. Can you say amen? Yeah. Let's say cast him out. Yeah. Well, let's work on ourselves. Let's work out on ourselves. See, you, you need to be honest with God like this brother back here. You have to be honest because, you see, God is not a man that should lie. If you need deliverance, you need to go to God and tell God, I got a struggle with this thing. I need to be set free. I need to be set free. Yeah, some of you got some serious anger issue. Yeah. It's no longer just plain anger. It's a demon now. Some of you got some drug addiction problems. It's not drug addiction no more. You've got an entity inside of you, man. <laughs> you got a porn problem? You need your eyes poked out and the delivery driven out of you. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. Come on, man. You have to, if you've got that problem, you need to be delivered of that. Because see, the devil will say, Oh, one time won't hurt you. That's where it begins. Man, that's what who does that sound like when he was talking to Eve? God, God, you see how he talked to Eve? Did he really say that? That's a, the way the devil talks. Did he, did he really say that? Yes, he did. Come on, man. Y'all got to wake up. Look at somebody say, wake up. Wake up. All right, here we go. He goes, uh, or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods? Now, I, I could be here on this thing forever, but you need to discern who is the strong man in you. Oh, thanks, David. I hope I'm glad you said Jesus, David. You need to know who the strong man is in you. Who is he? Jesus. What's wrong on this side? Who's the strong man in you? There you go. Jesus is the strong man. And you know what? Nobody will move him out except if you let him. You you have you have no clue. No idea till the Lord reveals to you the amount of power you have inside of you. You have power inside of you. I mean, you call those things that are not as though they are. You have power to kill with your words, power to heal. It's inside of you, Isaac. Yes, come on. It's inside. Look at somebody say the power of God is inside of you. The power of God is inside of you. It's. I'm not waiting for something to come on me. It's in us. Yeah. Say it's in us. The greater is he that is what? In me than he that is in the world. Look at somebody say, greater is he. Greater is he. That is within me. Than he that is in the world. Jesus' name. Give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. 
When this thing falls, remember who dwells inside of you. Remember, okay? Then let's keep going. And then he, unless he first binds a strong man, and then he will plunder his house. Well, I'll keep going. There's a lot of deliverance things there. He who is, look at, look what Jesus says. He who is not with me is against me. And he, look at this. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Now watch. You either are a gatherer or a scatterer. What are you? A gatherer. You gather people, right? You're not a scatterer. Right? No? Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men. But the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven you. Be careful. Leave the Holy Spirit alone, amen? Now, okay. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, I will, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Now, I'm going to give you a straight out, just straight out example. If you take the mark of the beast, it's over. There's no forgiveness. Don't let the devil tell you, oh, you'll be all right. Get the mark in. God will forgive you. No. You know why? Because your DNA is going to change. You're going to become a Nephilim, man. No. You are not forgiven if you take that mark. Don't take that mark. If you're here still, you're going to hear me. And we're all out of here. You're still here for some reason. You're going to hear my voice. Jeremy! Don't take that mark! Don't take that mark. Look at somebody say, don't take it. Kids, don't take that mark, man. No matter what. I don't care how much pressure comes on you. Don't take that mark. Why? Now, we know the COVID-19 vaccine, right? That wasn't the mark of the beast. That wasn't the mark of the beast. It was a precursor, I believe. I believe the COVID-19 vaccine was just, was, was just, you, you couldn't call it the mark of the beast. You know why? The beast wasn't around. He wasn't around yet. You can't even call the digital currency that's coming out. The mark of the beast. You can't, because there's no beast no, yet. Right, yeah. When the Antichrist steps into the scene, that's when it will become deadly for you to do anything. I, you know, church, I, I can't tell you if, we'll, if we will be here. Man, I hope we don't. I hope we're not here. I hope Jesus blows a trumpet and we all meet each other in heaven without colliding with each other. Amen. I just hope, I just pray, say, Lord, are we going to be here? I'm waiting for an answer. I don't want to be here. I don't care. I don't want to be here, Miles. You don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. I I'm telling you, man. This issue with our government taking full control. That's part of the beast system. And you all better wake up and quit thinking that you're in La La Land. This is serious stuff. Your soul. People, people are losing their minds, man. Losing their minds. Killing at random. Don't even care. Walmart. Target now has to put this bulletproof glass on their products. You can't even get nothing at Target without opening the door on that plastic. People go in there just pillaging, stealing everything. You know, I tweeted, I did you like this? I saw that one picture of the Walmart too. I said, if my dad knew that I was there doing that, he would whip my hind end tomorrow. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Don't be afraid to spank your children. Amen. Don't be afraid. They got the cheeks. <laughs> what do you think God gave those cheeks? But don't be don't be beating on them like the Hulk or anything like that. <laughs> Just spank them decently and tell them why. Tell them why. No, don't draw back. Don't be afraid of it. Can you say amen? Amen. All right, here we go. Now I need you to jump all the way to verse 43, and then we're going to finish with this. Steve, what time? 
Okay, thank you. 11.44. All right. Wow. Are you all ready? Go ahead. When an unclean, everybody say unclean. unclean. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man. <coughs> okay, hold on right there. The day before you leave this church, you need to make sure those unclean things have left you. Yes. That's what the Lord told me to tell you. You need to make sure those unclean things left you. Some of you don't even know because the timing is not right. God, God has your time for deliverance. Just ask the children of Israel. 400 years in bondage. And you, you, you're all upset for five years of bondage. God has a time. If you seek his face, you're fasting and praying, God will set you free. No, he will set you free because you know why? He <laughs> desires for you to be freer than you want to be free. No, he, Jesus said who the Son has set free is what? Free indeed. Free indeed. And you know what free indeed means? Free indeed. And then he says... You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Will do what? Set you free. But what happens? A lot of people don't want the truth. They want to go around it. I want. I want another way of getting delivered. I don't want this gospel stuff. You're in the wrong place. You're in the wrong place. I'm just telling you. No, Jesus delivers us. He delivers us. And you have to accept the fact that he is a deliverer. Yes. You understand? Jesus is the deliverer. Yes. Say with me. Jesus is the deliverer. Yes. So you need to know within yourself what spirit is still working in you, influencing you, troubling you, harassing you, vexing you. You need to know. But if you don't read your word, because you see this word, this word is a lamp. Yeah. It's not only a lamp, it's a mirror. One day you're going to read it, then all of a sudden you're going to see some ugly demon looking at you. And that demon is in you. Oh, man. You need to preach something else, Pastor Prosperity. No, man, you need deliverance. We need deliverance, we need people free. But see, when you get free, you need to stay free. Stay free, people. See, I didn't learn that, bro. I didn't learn that, my brother. Every time I went to jail, right back in. I'd be out for six months, right back in. Right, babe? Never bailed me out. She knew I had a bed and three three meals. I mean, I was I mean, you know, you get out, get out of jail, right? I'm free! Then six months later, oh, let's come on, you're going in. Stay free. Tell somebody stay free. Stay free. Stay free, stay free man. I want you to stay free. Now listen, listen, all seriously. Ask the Lord if there is some entity or something that is binding you up, harassing you, vexing you. We got people here that can pray. We got people that can teach you about deliverance. We got people here. But you've got to want to, you've got to want to know. Yeah. Amen. You, I mean, we're not going to release anybody that does the ministry and delivers to you if you're going to just waste their time. Because you will wear them out. That, that's a plan of the devil. You will wear them out. No. You need to be delivered. But you need, you need to be conscious of what is hindering you. You need to be conscious of what is stopping you from being all that God said you could be. There's something. Right? All right, go real quick. Like, you all know these scriptures. Ephesians. You all know, you all know them, but I, I got to do something. I want to give you an understanding. Ephesians chapter 4. Not 4. Jeez. 6. Now, Ephesians chapter 6, and I, 
I'm going to start at verse 10. I'm not going to stay long on here. He says, finally, my brethren. Who's the brethren here? What's wrong with this side over here? Who's the brethren over here? You're the brethren, right? All right. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. You want victory over the devil? you got to get strong in the Lord. You can't be half-baked. I don't like half-baked potatoes. I don't like half-baked food. And in the power of his might. Got it? Strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Say with me. Strong in the Lord strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Now watch what he says. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor. That you may be able to stand against the wiles, the strategies of the devil. The wiles, the strategies, the tricks, the manipulations. Then he said, here, watch. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Y'all got that? Flesh is not, it's not your problem, but it is. Hold on. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, I want to show you what God showed me. You see verse 10 again? Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power is might, right? Well, you, you that are righteous are the ones that are wrestling. You that are walking with Jesus the best you can, you are the one that's wrestling. You are the one that's contending with these demonic things. You are the ones that, that those things come to attack you. Because you're trying your best to live holy and righteous. I mean, you're trying. You understand? Remember what I said about Job. He was a righteous man. Man, I can just see God tell the devil, it, it, go ahead and do whatever, but don't take his life. I mean, you could handle boils. From the top of your head, down to the soles of your feet, and everything in between. Everything in between. Boils. And then his wife gets the devil in her. The wife goes, watch what the wife says. Hey, you still keep your integrity with God. Why don't you curse him and die? It's a wonder that woman didn't drop dead there. But Job, he held it out. Then his, all his kids got killed. Jesus. All his property, everything was stolen. But he held on. I said, he held on. And look what God did to him at the end. Wow. He was so blessed at the He was more blessed at the end than in the beginning. So you got to remember, if you live, I got you, you got to understand this. If you choose to live righteous in Christ Jesus, you will suffer persecution. Amen. You will suffer persecution. Yes. You will go through test and trial, fiery trials. You, you will, you will be tested. But whatever you do, don't give place to the devil. Look at somebody say, "Don't give place to the devil." Don't give place to the devil. All right, go back to Matthew. Real quick. Wow. Thank you, Steve. Steve, watching the time. All right. This, this is just. Just amazing, man. I, I thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Wow. Hold on, man. Thank you, Father God. We bless him, church. Bless him. 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 Man. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. You ready? When the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it goes to the dry places. It doesn't like moisture. Spirits don't like moisture. And that's why you got to remember. Remember this. You have rivers of living water flowing out of you. And you got a spring that, a spring, of, a well that springs up to everlasting. So you should never, you, you're never dry. 
It has nothing to do with what you feel. That's what the thing is with you people. You got to feel it. You go up to, you go up to the praise and worship. I didn't feel it today. I didn't feel it yesterday. I, I haven't been feeling it for the month. What are you, backslidden? No. You have rivers of living water. Everybody say, I have rivers of living water. So say, I have a well that springs up to everlasting. And everlasting. And guess what? That well never runs dry. Give God praise. All right, here we go. Now watch. The spirit goes out of a man. He goes through dry places seeking rest. <coughs> Demons can't rest, man. You ever see anybody restless? They're restless. I mean, they, they're always restless. They need deliverance, man. That's a restless spirit. <coughs> and finds none. He don't find nothing. Now watch. Then he says, Demons stop. Then he says, I will return. Look at this. To my house. Ooh, you used to be his house. You used to be his house. I used to be his house. Look at somebody say, you used to be his house. I mean, believe it. Yeah, you were. Don't, don't be telling me you were. This is what he says. Then he says, I will return to my house. He knows. The spirits that have left you know you. They know you. They, just because they've been cast out of you, they don't mean they forgot you. They know you. I said they know you. Jesus I know. All I know. Right? These demons are not stupid. They've been around a long time. Thousands and thousands of years. You have to be very careful. Amen? Watch what he says. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, watch. He finds it empty, swept, and put in order. That's all good. Everybody say that's all good. But well, one thing wrong. Emptiness. Somebody, you know what? Somebody who was doing this deliverance didn't hear Jesus right. Oh, you're delivered now. Go ahead. You're free. No. I know Norman Parrish, Brother Norman Parrish. I'll never forget Norman Parrish. He was how old? 80? 90? He was old, man. He was a mighty deliverance preacher. He was here. And he was telling us a story that he had to stay with the witch doctor who lived at his house for two years to get him totally free. So you guys, he's not talking about laying your life down. He, 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 he got him a place. He prayed with them, and he taught them the word of God because he didn't know the word of God. And how you gonna let loose somebody that's been delivered that don't know the spirit of God, don't know the word of God? No, you need to fill them with the word of God, and, and they gotta be filled with the spirit. Amen. You can't let them go like that. So if you guys are whoever's practicing this, you doing delivering some people, you're responsible for that soul. You are, not me. I'm telling you. <laughs> no. Watch. You know, God has loved you people so much. That he, he's been wanting you to be delivered once and for all. Once and for all. Man, I look at it this way. I don't want to be raptured out of here with some demon on me. Do you? You want to be a clean vessel. Everybody say clean. And, you know, and the enemy will pound you and pound you in your mind. Says, well, there will never be that way. Yes, it will. Because the master says, I'm coming back for a church without wrinkle, spot, or blemish. Don't sound like no demons in that church. Come on. Glorious church. Everybody say glorious church. Tell them I'm part of the glorious church. Look at somebody tell them I'm part of the glorious church. Now watch what happens. Then he goes. Then he goes and takes with him seven wow other spirits more wicked than 
you, do you see that? More wicked, there's a degree of wickedness. Yeah. This guy, when he came out, he wasn't strong enough to finish the job. So he calls his seven brothers, who are more worse than this one. And they're coming to finish. Isn't that funny? The number seven, completion. He's going to completely destroy this soul. I only know one person who has testified to me that they were seven times worse. You know what they told me? It was the most living, hideous nightmare. So please, I want you to get seven times worse. Then he goes, watch. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. Now watch. And they enter and dwell there. And look at, they dwell there. Now they live there, man. I mean, they shack it up now. Yes. They enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man, watch, is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. You that are watching this video, may God keep you, protect you from the evil one. If you have freedom, don't lose it. Stay free because Jesus loves you.